Hi, this is Merle. I just wanted to say thanks to Giles Warm of the World of Live Streaming, which can be found on YouTube under Step Back in Time TV or on the web at stepbackintime.tv. Also, I want to thank Rudy, Martin, Tommy, Dave, and the many others who have made StreamFest 2018 possible. I will leave URLs in the description. This is the live video of Tommy, Mark, Justin, and myself from August 4, 2018. And for those of you that don't know, my name is Merle Dixon. Giles and I actually started this thing and that has turned into the world of live streaming. And yes, he was and is the brains of the outfit. <laughs> now then, I have a YouTube channel. It's called Micro Homesteaders, where I do some live streaming. And this presentation you're about to witness is much different than most that you've seen today, I'm sure. Uh, the subject is going to be homesteading or farming, but on a very small scale compared to most farms and such. The object for most of us, though, is self-sustainability. And we want to be able to grow as much of our own food as possible and have a fair amount on hand in case of whatever kind of emergency that may arise. In case the grocery stores aren't open or what have you, we want to have something to eat. And I've invited Tom Willis. Uh, most of you know Tommy. Uh, actually, I brought him in with me on video so he couldn't troll me in the chat. But uh, that's another story. <laughs> And uh, he's been very important to our show lately. Also, you see Mark uh, in there from Rolling Homestead and his guest, Justin, who also has a new channel. And it's called Locked and Loaded 100%, where he calls out breaking news several times a day. So I'm going to go ahead, I think, at this point and turn it over to Mark and let him show you what he does and... Uh, give you a little talk go ahead mark thanks merle so yeah my name uh my name is mark and my homestead is rolling homestead and we uh decided to make something that is total uh total land that's sustainable it continuously refills us and i started doing the homestead videos uh probably about uh, about a year ago and it's grown into like merle said is a uh, um a bigger channel and we also have prayer streams and a bunch of other things that come up on the chat depending on if we're doing a live stream on homesteading uh, farming chickens gardening and a bunch of other things yeah you come into so it's uh it's a whole bunch of different ideas but the idea of it is that we really need to understand what a homestead's about and it's to help us is as farmers or as people that need something later on in life is where I live. It's deep snow. So we have to do things like the old ways. And that's kind of what it is as far as uh, non GMO. Um, there's no pesticides and you'll see that in the garden view here. Um, some of the weeds are overwhelming, but it's a good way to get good, wholesome food. We also have meat birds. We're running the red Rangers this year and a bunch, a bunch of other stuff. But me and Merle decided to go into cahoots with each other and start up our live stream. And it has been uh, very nice. I use uh, OBS. I also have used vMix, and that's what we're using now. And we also use Zoom. Depends on the day of the week. <laughs> Depends on the day of the week and uh, which one's working, right? Right. Tommy, would you say hello for us and... Uh... Tell us how much you enjoy our show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I am Tommy Willis, the great uh, live streamer. And uh, all seriousness, I do enjoy uh, what Merle and Mark are putting on on Saturday nights. It is a good, clean program. And I am not a homesteader. I do good to find my home when I walk away from it for any reason. But these guys have got a good 
good show going. And to be honest, what they're doing to me is very interesting. Uh, I wish I could do half the stuff that they do, but I'm really old and feeble, and I just need someone to bring food to me when I need it because I'm also lazy. But Mark does a great job. I love watching his videos and Merle's videos. I, I watched the one he put out this afternoon uh, with just a little short clip of his wife uh, talking about their garden. And it's just a nice, uh, I don't know what you would say, it's just a nice show. And so, you know, you guys just go at it. I'll just be in here. I'm a much better troll than I am on live stream. So I'll just, I've got to go in here and try to keep uh, John Thompson quiet because he's been picking on me all day. So. All right, Tom. Thanks a lot. Is uh, Mark, is, uh, is Justin able to hear everything? And can he yep. tell us about his channel? Yeah, go ahead. Tell him about your channel. Yeah, absolutely, Merrill. I can hear you and thank you. Um, my channel is basically uh, oh, got a phone call there. Um, I report on a lot of breaking news and I like to report on how things that are going on are related to prophetic days. Um, I'm actually you know, I'm a very passionate, uh, proud patriot of our country. I'm a defender of the First Amendment and Second Amendment and um I always tell people that my channel um, absolutely, you know, it belongs to my loyal sub slash friends, subscribers, brothers and sisters in Christ. So uh, Locked and Loaded 100% is basically, it's not my channel. It belongs to everybody that is subscribed to my channel. It's a great uh, family atmosphere. Um, we do prayers as well, prayer requests. Um, but I am very, uh, you know, heavy into the politics and the corruption. So that's just a little bit about my channel and Thanks. the prepping aspect as well. We appreciate that too. I, uh, I don't know. Sometimes I see uh, something pop up there two or three times a day and it's always of some importance too. But the thing is, is like I, like I said earlier, we, uh, we, we, we feel like we're obligated to help, one another in any way that we can that's kind of how mark and i got got together actually he was uh and i don't think you'll mind me saying this he was in a timeout uh, uh like G giles went, went through some time back and was unable to get the, his word out so uh i asked him if he would like to do it with me and that has been almost three months ago and the uh, the crowd seemed to like it, and they asked us if we would do it every week. So we, we, we've tried to do that. But one of the big things that we try to do is, like I said, is that is uh, try to maintain enough food that if something bad was to happen, and it could be anything, it could be the weather, uh, but that you are somewhat prepared. Because I, I've come to find out that most of the grocery stores in our town only have enough food on hand for about three days. And that's during the good times. So, you know, a lot of people aren't going to get something to eat after that. But the other thing is, too, we like to know what we're eating. And I am absolutely... 100% convinced that the food in the grocery store, if you live on it long enough, it will eventually do you harm. So we try to stay away from all the GMOs. And, uh, you know, it's difficult to do that, too, actually, if you uh, aren't paying any attention to what you're eating. you uh, If you start, all of a sudden you're going to you're going to start reading labels and and watching uh TV shows that are going to scare you a little bit. I I feel good about the people in, in Europe, though, because they don't have to worry about the GMO, and, and that's a genetically modified organis organism, uh, because their countries won't allow them in. 
and neither will Russia. Uh, I don't know about the UK, but I don't think they allow them in either. At any rate, it's uh, something you really don't want to eat. Uh, it's like uh, taking weed killer and pouring it on something that you're going to eat. So how smart do you have to be to figure that out? Don't you think so, Mark? Yeah, exactly. You, uh, you know, as one of the things that I learned a while back ago is if you're going to the grocery store and you buy your own meat birds around here in the States, um, I found out that it's not the cleanest meat that you want to buy. And roughly there's for one pound of chicken, there is the same part of the GMO as in one uh, thousand pounds of beef. So um, if you look at it per pound per pound, you're getting a lot of stuff that you don't want to get to And cleaning and everything else is another whole story in itself. So if you know what you're planting, uh, non GMO, if it's an heirloom seed or any of that kind of thing, you know what you get at the end. And, uh, some of the videos that we have that are going behind us right now with our meat birds and then some of the stuff on the, on the homestead here in this garden, it really does make a big difference. And this year we started going with the uh, back to Eden method. So we're using the compost and the chips, but some of the vegetables that we got out of here was just amazing in size. And it could be the weather. It could be the season that we had, but for breaking ground this first time this year, it's been huge. So, um, I think there's a lot of things that we can learn from it. And you're later on in life, uh, we're going back to the way it used to be. And a lot of people have lost the skill. It's so much easier to go down to the grocery store and get it. And that's true, it is. But like Merrill said, you don't know what you get. Right. Yeah. That's, and uh, uh, one good point that Merrill has said before, that people um, that live in small apartments and only have, uh, you know, a limited amount of space can still grow plenty of, uh, you know, with potted plants can grow non-GMO uh, heirloom plants and uh, can definitely uh, add to their su sustainability. <laughs> That's a tongue twister for me. That's one of the things that we try to tell people. You don't have to uh, live on a 2,000 acre ranch to be a, a homesteader. You can live in a two room apartment and still raise your own food or at least some, at least some of it i've got a uh, a short clip that that tommy referred to just a little while ago that i think i'll play with uh, my wife describing our garden as it was yesterday afternoon hi i'm carol uh this is the first year for our raised garden beds and we're really really happy um, I'm not sure this is supposed to be narrated as fast as it's going, but I'll try to keep up. You can see, uh, uh, here's some okra and some cu more cucumbers and pole beans, <clears throat> rattlesnake pole beans. Our tomatoes are just doing wonderful. Oh, the flowers are always a welcome sight. I don't see any Let's weeds. See. Where are we going now? I know, oh, right? You can see the sweet potatoes, <laughs> kind of. They're in there. We'll see them better here in a minute. Must be fake. And we've got some <laughs> mustard greens and some beets. You know, and, and uh, John Thompson said in there, Chlor chlorinated chicken beans, is scary. He's beans. absolutely correct. And that is something that is. Uh, Here's the sweet potatoes. Um, That's a better look. Big around here in the States. Boy, I hope they do as good well as they look. Didn't you say that they and we have summer squash. Chicken breast. We have yep. acorn squash and we have butternut squash. And it's kind of traveling on down the lost path uh, there. audio on Merle. And we have extra tomato plants and the peppers are looking good. Uh, I'm starting to get a lot of stuff to there put up. Did. And boy am I happy. It so keeps, like you can see uh, is uh yes we you got, are um Merle's peppers are just we going have been off two busy people hey merle Here's if you say something greens. it'll bring your, your video back to in focus oh i'm sorry it's... yeah yeah okay because for some reason there's no audio no, on your video and over here <coughs> uh well let's this is let's a make start her of some winter 
crops. <laughs> we have pak choy and Chinese cabbage. Beets. And I think in the back is some collard greens. You're going to have to do the voiceover, I think, Merle. Oh, here's some. Yeah. Of we nice put it on passe, man. That's it. And our summer squash that yeah. we're getting ready to put up there. We got it put up along there with our is. green greens. There we go. That is. Uh, Quite often, things are really popping right now. And I know that that's really going to taste good for us this winter. We're a couple busy people right now. Now, Mark wouldn't know anything about them. And here's our... Uh, First pickles, our bread and butter pickles. This is an awfully good recipe that I got out of a canon book from a friend of mine from 1947. Wow. Yeah, and like I said earlier in the day, once, I've, once I'm in here with you guys for a little while, I'll begin to understand what it is that I'm supposed to do. Uh, Tommy, I've been hanging around with him and do I need to say any more? <laughs> Merle, I just want to tell you that the uh, that stuff that was canned looks yeah. very delicious. Those those uh, green beans and, and uh, squash, uh, you can send me any jars you want. I will wash them before I send them back. Okay. That sounds good. We'll uh, get UPS out probably Monday. Okay. You 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 keep your keep your ear to the ground now. I'll stand out front all day waiting. <laughs> all right. You know, there's there's the other things too. Is that you can uh, don't forget. There's also the wild edibles of things. Uh, this year we made the dandelion jam um, and that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of things that you can do just besides the vegetables. You know, um, dandelion is actually besides being medicinal and the teas and stuff like that. It makes an awesome awesome jelly. It tastes just like honey. Yeah. I would like to say something here, Merle. I don't mean to interrupt, but then probably do. But one of the most shocking things I saw, and, and for me, was Mark, on one of his videos, he walked out into the garden, and there was a flowers or some flowers there, and he just plucks the flower and eats it. And I'm, I just, you know, what is he doing? And it's an edible plant. And I just didn't, I mean, walk out into nature and eat something off the plant who does that that was a that was a nasturtium and um they're actually they have two purposes they uh go on and they uh take care of all your pests and um take care of um bugs and little mice and rodents and that and on top of it they're inedible so they they actually taste like a they start out sweet and like a flower would, and then they also go up and have a little peppery taste at the end of it. So there, there's two purposes to that. And the whole idea of the garden and the and the method that I'm using is anything in there besides the, obviously the mysterinums, or uh, not mysterinums, but the marigolds are another way to get rid of rodents and pets, pests. But I want everything in there to be edible. And to be honest with you, Tommy, they are delicious because I eat them all the time when I come over here. That's a fact. <laughs> yeah. And I, I would say that I am far from a, an, an expert on wild edibles. But my wife, uh, I have told some of you this, she's from uh, Middle Tennessee. And uh, she knows a lot about wild edibles. She actually does. And she tells me that we've got quite a few around here. Also, I have found out through Mark, that every part of the dandelion is edible. You can make tea from the roots. You can eat the flower. You can, I mean, there's nothing there that you can't eat. And that could be a good thing if things were difficult. We'll put it that way. And, and like I said before, is I, I have all the, I've got a bunch of videos on my YouTube channel that has uh, medicinal purposes from stinging nettle, um, sumac tea, um, a bunch of different stuff on there that you can actually go and watch uh, and figure out what's best. But one of the best things that you can do is get um, 
uh, Peterson's hand guide. This book comes with me when I go out into the woods or anywhere, uh, just to remind me of what I'm looking for. Yeah, it's a good book, and I need to get one of them. Uh, Did you say Peterson's? Yep. One of the things that I wanted to say, though, before we did leave, is how much we appreciate VMix. And I think Tommy did that as well, and and, and a lot of the other speakers that have been here. Well, that's, that's what I've used from the beginning. And, uh, gosh, I just don't know that it gets any better but well not only that you look at the um audio quality and video quality there's uh people now that are actually trying to come over and see how we set up our live streams because when it's when everything is running good obviously tech is kind of it has its days but it is a smooth running it's very easy to use um tell you the truth i'm a machinist when merle got me started on this um i had our live stream was coming up in what was it merle four hours and I had VMix up and running, and I was broadcasting in four hours. So, and that's all. And all I used was OBS before that. I like the picture quality. I like the Kronos key. I think it's a lot better than most of them. And I think it's a really good software. Yeah, VMix uh, and the Chroma key will will absolutely spoil you for sure. Well, I tell you what, and I the- think it's I think it's important to note that VMix was born. Because a guy needed to live stream his church service. So, Amen. Amen. That's awesome. That is I exactly think that's great. And uh, what I like, too, about Martin is that he doesn't try to rob you either. He, I think all he wants to, to do, really, is to make a decent living. And he's doing that and giving, giving a lot back to people because... Uh, to do what what VMix does in other with other software would cost you thousands of dollars, n- n- not uh, three hundred and fifty or seven hundred or what have you. So, I did want I did want to get that in there. Go ahead. And what I what you know, you Merle can testify to this. When I started using VMix, I was using a HP with an i three. And yeah, I had to cut down a lot of stuff, but I still could push it. And I pushed that system right to its limits for three months. So it, you don't need to, the top of the line. I'm, obviously, it does help to have a better system than that. But I, I did it off an i3 for three months. Yeah, it's uh, that was. I was very surprised when I heard that. I really was. But uh, it, he actually did it. Well, guys, I don't have anything else. If you do, I be sure and uh, and say so. If I I haven't even been paying attention to the to the chat, other than John Thompson seems to be of uh, of like mind as we are, uh, from what I can tell. Yeah, Daniel Land Wine's a good one too. Rhubarb wine's good too. Great for bartering. Hey. Uh, I just wanted to say one thing too, Marl. Uh, I hit a thousand subscribers today, and I don't have the technology you all have, just a cell phone. So I look yeah, forward to I, I should have mentioned that. I, I didn't know that you'd broke a thousand yet, but uh, I knew you were getting pretty close. And for a guy to do that with a cell phone, that is just hard to believe. It really is. And I, Proud of you too, man. Oh. And and, and uh, you uh, well, you just do a good job at what you do, and I think that means means most everything. Yeah, good content brings in today, people. If I can get the technology that you all have and and learn it, um, I believe the channel will expand and grow much more to a wider audience. So we're working on it. I can make you a special deal on getting this stuff. Just send me a blank check signed, and I can get this in the mail to you immediately, if not quicker. I'll sign it Rubbermaid, and I'll bounce it your way. <laughs> okay. That'd be about the same, yeah, for me. Now, I'm really happy to hear that you did that. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> we, I've been in here for, I think I'm almost – somewhere near five five and a half months or something like that and i'm 
I'm trading somewhere around 300 or something like that. Fairly close to that. Yeah, but just re well, just remember, Merle, when we started this thing, you were at 96. I know. That's what I was going to say. It's a, to, a, And to me, really, the numbers don't really mean anything, but they're always back here. You know, if you're uh, if your numbers don't increase, you feel like you're doing something wrong. So. Uh, well, before we go, we always got to do this for Tommy. <laughs> yeah I, I can count my subscribers on one finger so you know it's it's yeah, it'll grow if you just do content i don't do content and i need to so i'm going to start on that one of these days We're well i i do want to i do want to welcome mark and um uh, uh Justin. Well, I know it's locked and loaded. Justin, locked and loaded. Uh, to sort of like our world here being on this uh, stream fest. And, you know, this is where we've been playing around for a while. And we would hope that you guys will come back uh, when we do a wall show. You're, you're welcome anytime because you, both of you, do good content. And that's that's what we all look for. So, so thanks, Tommy. That's I appreciate that, and I know Justin does yeah, too. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much for the compliment, and definitely look forward to coming back. You know, Merle does yeah. help a little bit too. You know, <laughs> I do what I need. <laughs> uh, well, we've got a show to do in uh, about yep. 30, 34 minutes, so uh, I think we will say goodbye. And thanks to all that uh, actually sat through the whole thing, because I know that they were they thought they were going to get. We were going to teach him at least something about how to do do something with tech or or vmix uh well i well, did you know if you look at look at how our our inputs are in a vmix i mean you can't what i did in 15 minutes on vmix with what i'm showing you right now but it took me an hour and a half on uh, obs or something like that and it surely wouldn't look like it does now yeah well, i agree yeah i think everybody looks good thanks a lot for everyone that watched and uh We'll see you uh, next year, hopefully.